streams in the desert. You know, every day we have to face ourselves in the mirror. Now, for some of you, that's a pleasant experience and you enjoy getting <laughs> uh, metroed up or dolled up or cleaned up. And you spend hours getting yourself ready for your day. You present yourself in a best light scenario. And for the rest of us who see you, we appreciate that. <laughs> Putting your best foot forward is something that we all do. But, you know, God sees us where we are as we are. Not always in our best frame of mind, but sometimes at our worst. And He still loves us. One of the things that I wanted to do in devotional was to be here in as I am, the way I am. You know, to have no errors and to not be any different <clears throat> in relating, you know, who Jesus is with me than what he does every day to me and through me and chooses to <laughs> make me into the person he wants me to be because there are times where I'm like you, you know, it's like, ah, I want to sleep in or I want to do something else. But the longer you walk with God, the less you want to do your own thing because you figure out that, you know, you try it for a while and you don't like it. You think it tasted good, but after a while, it turns kind of acidy in your stomach. Or whatever it is that you tried to do that you thought was going to give you so much happiness and satisfaction, you burn out after a while and you realize, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. But with God, there's always a newness and a vibrancy that somehow is different, that every day there's a new way that He reveals Himself in something unique and distinctive to you and to me that causes us to be excited about what he's going to do today that we can look forward to the day as though it were a revelation of himself literally a revelation of jesus christ to you a revelation of jesus to me and that's what devotions do and reading the word of god does that it's not a question of getting up and getting ready and looking at yourself in the mirror but sometimes looking in the word is a revelation of looking at jesus in you and in me and the more that he reveals himself in us the less we see ourselves <laughs> and our mistakes and the more we see what he is making of us the lord hath his way in the whirlwind and the storm nahum 1 3 i recollect when a lad and while attending a classical institute in the vicinity of Mount Pleasant, sitting on an elevation in that mountain and watching a storm as it came up the valley. The heavens were filled with blackness, and the earth was shaken by the voice of thunder. It seemed as though that fair landscape was utterly changed, and its beauty was gone, never to return. But the storm swept on and passed out of the valley, and if I had sat in the same place on the following day and said, where is that terrible storm with all its terrible blackness? The grass would have said, part of it is in me. And the daisy would have said, part of it is in me. And the fruits and flowers and everything that grows out of the ground would have said, part of the storm is incandescent in me. Have you asked to be like your Lord? Have you longed for the fruit of the Spirit? Have you prayed for sweetness and gentleness and love? Then fear not the stormy tempest that is at this moment sweeping through your life. A blessing is in the storm, and there will be rich fruitage in the afterward. Often we mistake what we're going through as though it were some attack of Satan or some challenge to our faith or some provocation by some person, when in part it may be God has allowed that situation to come into our life to create the circumstances with which we could grow from it. It isn't always the devil attacking you. 
where it isn't always your flesh warring against you, though both of those do occur, sometimes we need to recognize that God is at work also both to do and to will of his good pleasure in you to cause you to come to a place of simple understanding of his nature. Sometimes it's not about you, but it's about him. So in your circumstances, whenever you lack wisdom of knowing what to do with your circumstance, Jesus says that we should ask him, that we should ask the Father who abradeth not but giveth to all men liberally the wisdom that we need with which to operate. Because you see, while we may have the gift of discernment or we may think we know what we know because we have gifts from the Spirit, we don't always do according to what God said to do in every situation because only God knows all that pertains to righteousness and godliness. And sometimes that's to work in us something that needs to come out of us so that he could pursue through us some direction he wants us to go. And when he does that, he uses trials, he uses tribulations, he uses circumstances, he uses his own words sometimes, and sometimes lack of his presence to cause us to move in a certain way that we may not have heard him say or we may not have quite understood the right way that he wanted us to go. So don't always presume, unless you've asked Jesus about it first, that the devil made you, or the devil is after you, or that your flesh is beating you. Sometimes it may just be that God is using you. And when he does, don't be surprised that after the storm, there's a huge rainbow and a blessing for you, just waiting for you to see and to behold in your day maybe even today.